Hey guys, welcome back to Oak Abode. I am excited to show you guys our brand new chicken coop, which Ian just finished building for us this morning. Our goal with this chicken coop was to have the most efficient chicken coop possible. Now that being said, there's a lot of trial and error involved and I'm not guaranteeing that there won't be more error in the future. But I just say that to warn you guys that we put kind of a lot of non-traditional features in this coop. We did things a little bit differently than most people do, maybe even a lot of people recommend to. So we're gonna keep you guys posted if any of these ideas turn out to be horrible ideas, but so far they're actually working really, really well. So I'm gonna take you guys on a tour of all the features in this coop right now. If you guys want, you can click the link in the description for some more written details and for a lot of the instructions for how Ian built this coop if you wanna build something like it yourself. We don't have the exact building plans up quite yet, but that's something that we wanna get up in the next couple of weeks for you guys. So hopefully by the time you watch this video, it will be available for you. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So for our coop design, I really wanted a practical design. Things like porches and little swings are so cute, but if you know anything about having chickens, it all gets dirty so fast. So I wanted something practical and very low maintenance. The other thing I wanted was something modular. So this coop can actually be taken down in six different sections. The roof, the walls, and the bottom all come apart so that we can move it to the next property if we want to. These coops are not super cheap to build, so we really didn't want to have to build a new one every single time we move. We just decided to go for a white exterior. I am toying with painting the trim black, but I love the white wood and black look. We do have two big slides to keep the girls nice and secure in the coop, and this is what it looks like from the inside. Reptar is excited to show you the feeder. Now, I hate to say it, but this feeder is totally temporary. We are actually going to have a completely different feeder system that is gonna funnel in from the outside, and that is to free up more space on the inside of the coop. But if you're looking for an easy feeder to throw in place, we do recommend this one. We use it to feed our chickens for about three to four days at a time. We will make sure to post an update video with the new feeder system when it is in place. Obviously, any good chicken coop needs roosts, and this is the roost that we have in place so far. I will say I'm not sure that all our girls can fit on it comfortably, so we are actually going to add another roost a little further out, but for now, this does the trick. This is the highest roost we are gonna have in the coop. And the reason for that is because we don't wanna go any higher or we could start to get in the way of where the airflow is. So as you can see, the ventilation across the top of the coop is well above where the chickens will roost. So the nice part about this is condensation and moisture can rise up to the top of the roof and filter out during the winter, keeping everything nice and dry, but also there is no draft that will brush across the chickens and keep them cold. We're probably gonna add more ventilation along the corners too, but it will be the same design as this one that is already in place. We'll probably do the same thing on each side here too. Ventilation is so important. Without a doubt, probably the most exciting feature about our new chicken coop is the automatically opening and closing chicken door. Chicken Guard was kind enough to send us their self-locking automatic chicken door kit, and seriously, we are obsessed. So you can choose when you want the door to open and close. This time of year, we have the door opening. I think we have it closing at 6 p.m. and opening at seven. But it is priceless to not only know that your chickens are locked in safe, but to know that they're getting outside on time too. I, for one, am somebody who likes to sleep in. So in the past, my chickens just kind of had to wait for me to get up to come let them out. But now they are able to go outside right on time. And even if you're like us and you don't really travel a lot, we have found that this kit comes so in handy more because 
sometimes we'll go over to a friend's or we'll go out to dinner and the sun goes down and we don't get back to lock the chickens in until 9 or 10 or sometimes even later. And especially after our dogs found and chased off a possum in our coop this fall, we have been a lot more serious about wanting to keep our chickens safe. We found out that possum was probably eating our eggs for some weeks before we found out. So having an automatic chicken door also helps keep the eggs safe too. You know you're a chicken dork when you cannot get over how cool that is. So of course I'm linking as many resources as possible for you guys below. But if there's one thing not to miss, definitely check out this chicken guard kit because it is worth its weight in gold. By the way, we don't have to pay a chicken sitter as much now either because if it's only a couple days that we're gone, this thing takes care of them. We don't have to worry about someone coming over twice a day. That is so huge. As you guys can see, the chicken guard installation was very straightforward, but if you want more details on how exactly it's installed, you can head to their website, which I linked below. Another feature that I knew that we wanted was I wanted a lot of free open space on the floor of the coop. And that is not only because, <laughs> hey Sammy, that is not only because we want them to have enough room to move around. If you guys have already been following our channel, you know we love to free range our chickens. We love to give them as much time outside as possible. However, we live in Wisconsin and we have really harsh winters. And that means that some days it's just gonna be best that they don't go outside. They're not gonna wanna go outside anyway. So on those days, I really want them to have enough room inside where they're not gonna start picking at each other. They're not gonna start getting bored and running out of room. One of the main things I hate about traditional coops is how feeders and waters tend to be placed in the middle and they tend to get in the way. Like I mentioned, this feeder system is temporary. What we are going to have is a feeder system that holds the food from the outside and funnels it in. So that's gonna free up even another square foot of space over here. But on that note, we especially did not want the waterer in the middle of the coop like most people put them. We found that if water is hanging from the middle of the coop, the chickens always kick stuff into it, but most importantly, they will always knock it over. And in the winter, moisture is the enemy. And in the summer, whatever time of year it is, moisture is the enemy and having chickens kicking over their water or bumping it and spilling on the floor is so bad for keeping them warm and for keeping them healthy. So what we did was we actually created a separate water box. Like I said, I don't know for sure that this is the best solution in the world. What I do know is that by having a water box, the chickens don't have any opportunity to knock it over when they're walking by it. They have a lot less opportunity to kick stuff into the water which just makes it dirty and obviously more unhealthy and it's gonna last a lot longer I'm not gonna have to refill it nearly as much and as an added bonus since we need heated waters that extension cord is gonna be out of the way from the chickens they're not gonna be able to mess with it they're not gonna be able to step on it and potentially cause problems long story short I just really didn't want feeders and waters in the middle of the space I wanted the chickens to have plenty of room to walk around and not get in each other's way either when we're out of town or when it's just too cold and snowy to go outside As with any good chicken coop, we included nest boxes. So these do protrude out from the wall, which saves more space on the floor. Pretty basic nest box design. We decided to go with two boxes. We found that any more than two boxes, the chickens really don't use for the number of chickens that we have, but they actually laid these in there before we even officially moved them in when they were just checking it out. So we know that they do like this nest box. We made sure to place it high enough off the ground so that other chickens can't bug the lady if she is laying. And we just used this galvanized roofing, the same roofing that we used on the top of the coop to keep the aesthetic the same. We were pretty torn about whether or not we were going to have the coop on the ground so that we could walk into it or if we were gonna have it raised up from the ground 
so that the chickens could walk under it. In the end, we decided it was a lot more important to have it raised off the ground so that the chickens could run under it, hang out under there when it's raining and when there's a lot of snow. And even though we did find it is frustrating to clean in the other coop that we had, we had the same design. However, we actually found that we almost never needed to clean underneath the coop. And that's because since almost no moisture gets down there, it breaks itself down really well. It all just turned kind of dusty and the chickens love to dust bathe down there. There has never been any smell during the summer in the three years that we've had them. So ultimately, even though it would be hard to clean if we needed to, we decided since we haven't really had to clean the other one in three years, we would keep it this way for this one too. One thing you might be wondering is where we keep the oyster shells. And we actually don't use oyster shells for our chickens. Instead, for calcium supplementation, we prefer to use black soldier fly larvae. They much prefer this to oyster shells. It's got 75% more calcium than mealworms. And as an added bonus, it helps supplement the insect nutrients that they would be getting if it were summer and they were free ranging. All those micronutrients are so important for the girls. So we love to use Grubterra during the winter months, not only to keep them healthy, but also to keep them trained. As you guys can see, I use it to train them into their new coop, to teach them that the new coop is a happy place to be. And they certainly love this process. If you guys want, you can use the code Okabode on the Grubterra website, which I've linked below Below, and that will save you 10%. Now, if you know anything about chicken keeping, you probably noticed that there is something missing here, and that is the chicken run. We have not made the chicken run yet. We are gonna do that in a separate video because we're not sure if we're gonna get that out before winter yet. The ground is pretty cold already. And also like this chicken coop, we want the run to be really thoughtfully designed and we're not sure we wanna rush into it. We have a few different designs in mind. The run is definitely gonna be fully covered so that they are protected from air predators, but right now they are pretty happy just free ranging and we keep our dogs out with them when they're free ranging most of the day too. Three years without a hawk attack, knock on wood, hopefully it won't happen in the next few weeks while we're finalizing the plans. So that being said, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we would love if you would hit that subscribe button so that you can join us again in the future and stay posted on the run design as well as any updates we're gonna do to this coop and if our crazy ideas are working in the future or not. And if you're not already following us on Instagram, our Instagram handle is oak underscore abode. Like I mentioned guys, I linked those black soldier fly larva treats that we love below. You guys can use the code oak abode, one word to say 10% on those if you want to give those a try and the coolest part of course that automatic chicken door I linked that for you guys below as well as always I would love to hear about your chicken coop setups as well as any pros and cons that you've noticed along the way We could all benefit from learning from each other and like I mentioned the link is in the description for how we built this coop If you want to build something similar yourself as well as any other resources you might be looking for from this video Thanks for watching guys I'll do an update video every few months with how our crazy design ideas are working, but otherwise we will see you next time.